Fever Hotel is in a very, very bad shape. A lot of things is, is needed to be done in the hotel, the toilets, the painting, the, the, a lot of things. Things I, I think first I have to acknowledge that the, the, the university, university management have been trying their best to sort of like help the students and make everywhere conducive. But there are some things that I just feel like kind of hampers our learning, learning abilities in this school. So first things I just want to say the hostel is, is abysmal. Like there's no lights. Even if there's light, the lights are unsteady. There's the fact that there's no light, there's no water supply. The mosquitoes in the hostel are ha. Nothing to write home about. The hostel is unkept, toilets are unusable. You now okay leave the hostel, you want to go to the classrooms and then you're in the class for like you're wearing tie, you're wearing blazers, you're wearing a uh, clean coat and then the heat is unbearable. You cannot learn. Everywhere is so hot. The lecturer is talking in the front and you can't see because there's no practically no board. The projectors are practically not clear. So there are a lot of things that sort of like hampers our learning and learning abilities in school. So we have to double up on our efforts, go to the reading rooms, the it's small, so we have only like two available for the whole of the college. So only two reading rooms for the whole of students in the college. So you are you are at a disadvantage at some point. You now have to read in your room again where it's hot, it's 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 unbearable sometimes. So I, I just feel like we have to call on the the management, the government, like other alumni, people that have gone through what we are currently going through to come and like help us come to our aid and make learning fun, like make learning accessible, make learning easy for us so that we can be the best that we, we know we can be. I'm not happy to say this, but over the course of 60 years, the infrastructure of the college has gradually declined. Unfortunately, the government cannot do it all. Uh, the funds that we are being given cannot really sort out our issues those structure that we have on ground presently are the one that we had since 60 years ago. And if we are talking of the state of those facilities, they are already, some of them are decayed, some of them are in one of the states, and uh, even maintaining them uh, is very huge. Some of the buildings too are, are leaking. When it rains, the deck or the deckings have cracks. And even when the rain starts falling, the water uh, seeps through those cracks and goes straight into some offices. Some offices leak. And some buildings, big buildings, are also leaking. And these are occasioned by lack of funds. Because of the age of the college, our electrical power facilities are aging. Some of them are being installed for almost 60 years and they are aged and they need to be re replaced. Electricity is a problem, uh, as we all know in Nigeria. And we need to address this issue of electricity holistically. My name is Engineer Wahab from the Engineering Services Department. This is Station E. In Station E here we have um, switches and transformers. Most of the equipment you're looking at if they are functional they will help our distribution network to be much scalable it help us to do a lot of load shedding and um, at least manage our resources within the limit Suddenly we lost one of our transformers to overload is as a result of not having enough transformers in the station if there are enough transformers in this station none of the transformers should be lost over the over the age of 10 years so the minimum they can last is 20 years but because of overload, we are having issues, and this is calling for rehabilitation as quick as possible. So, and uh, you can look around, you see that the station is not even looking tidy. Part of these uh, results that are created by non-funding. The proper funding, this station will be looking like a standard substation. This is a feeder pillar. This is about 60 years old. In modern electrical network, you don't find something like this anymore. Uh, we are supposed to rehabilitate something like this or bring new facilities to replace them. Immediate intervention is necessary to keep it moving and to help our distribution network. You know, power is key to our educational system. If there is no power for this school, studying here will be very difficult.
I would really like to change it is electricity. Having 24 7 lights would really make students' life easier. When I came into College of Medicine, University of Lagos, I was proud of two things. Number one, the constant electricity. And then number two, the fact that the hostel accommodates everyone. Unfortunately, currently now, I'm a 500 level student and the situation of electricity is nothing to write home about because we are back to Nepal. And we all know that in this present Nigeria, staying on the national grid, it is not sustainable. And as a student leader, um, I know firsthand how the issue of epileptic power supply affects the average student because there are so many times where we go for three days, two days without light because the electricity is faulty. There are so many instances of students using GT Bank light or UBA light to read and prepare for exams. In terms of feeding, in terms of food spoilage, a lack of water sometimes, and even sleeping condition, because so many times now we have issues of mosquito infestation and the like. In terms of staffing, a good number of our staff really are leaving the job because of the poor remuneration, poor condition of, of uh, living, and then poor incentives provided for by government. As you can see, this office is not looking and you see even for personnel that are working here. Look at the chairs, the tables, even the entire office environment is not uh, properly uh, taken care of. Uh, people are actually working here and they are giving their best to this uh, college and they deserve to also be treated um, as such. Everything you are finding here is as a result of no funding. We believe that um, proper intervention could help uh, create a peace lift upon what we have here. There are many things that are supposed to be properly uh, locked or kept. This is an officer's office. So we can see that it's not even conducive for this. These are some of our buildings. This is the Department of Child Delta X, and the next one is the Faculty of Delta Science. You can see the buildings, they are still strong, they are safe, they are structurally sound, but they need to be rotated and they need to be decorated. You can see that the paints are faded off, and if they are not taken, after some time, you begin to see some level of dilapidation. Our lecturers, particularly, they need to be upgraded with modern facilities. One of the things that I, my particular pet like is research because we're a college and we need to produce data, substance, and get involved in the larger society by using our intellectual strength to change the society. So I'm very partial to research and I would really like the research to move to a different level, a higher level, where it teams up more with the government and with the private sector. We are medicine students, we are medical students, and the need for free Wi-Fi to improve our learning and to improve our research cannot be overemphasized. Um, we are doing the best we can with the faculty uh, being granted some uh, grants and uh, research uh, funds in about uh, four departments, namely uh, surgery, obstetric and gynecology, medicine, as well as uh, radio-oncology. We can do better, but funding is the bane of our problem. We need uh, skills laboratory which our faculty can be proud of where we can do 
a lot of research as well as training of uh, both undergraduates and postgraduate students. If you are coming into this College of Medicine using the college entrance or the college gate, you will see clearly that the, that route is almost becoming not motorable. And then the most disheartening thing is the fact that when it rains, the whole gate is swampy, it's flooded, and it takes hours and days. And so this year things got a bit better, but we need to have a holistic uh, solution to it. A lot of the equipment that we would have used or that we would need providing services are becoming obsolete. A good number of them really are not functioning anymore. If you go to some of our labs or laboratories, I cite one example, like the biochemistry teaching lab. Virtually every equipment there, including reagents and consumables, are becoming non-existent. So excited this fundraising is, is happening during my tenure because it's going to afford us the opportunity to right a lot of wrongs in the college. I'm hoping and counting on the support of all our sponsors, or intended sponsors, and the, the alumni association, the diaspora. Uh, funds collected during this drive will be judiciously used and we intend to publish in newsletters how we are spending it so that it will be completely transparent. I urge you to please be part of the next 60 years. Many of us, including my humble self, will not be there when the next 60 years is celebrated. But I hope, I hope that when the wall of honor is put up, and we intend to do that, I hope on the wall of honor, my name will be there as having been part of a particular project. The plane has landed, but the plane is not without an engine. The plane has been grounded, but the plane is not without a pilot. The plane has been grounded, but it is not without staff. And it is certainly not without passengers, the alumni, the friends, and the well-wishers. And we will take off. We just ask you to please join us and let us take off.